have it here. Have a look at um, refurbishing these um, types of um, electronic soap dispensers, liquid soap dispensers. I've actually been buying quite a few of them and um, they've been systematically failing for one reason or another and um, it's starting to get a bit, ah, I think a bit sort of expensive and from an electronics waste perspective very wasteful to continuously buy new ones. So I'm um, going to dig in and see if we can uh, refurbish um, the, some of them at least. Um, Basically, they're all the same. The, the internal components are the same, and the mechanical dimension is the same. It's just that the, um, they have a, d a different color scheme. So um, we're going to focus on the, um, on the um, so-called black version. But uh, the innards are, and the procedure is the same as the, um, the white one. Anyway, um, let's get into this. So, I'm going to go through the procedure that I usually go through when I'm trying to um, recondition this. So let's have a look at the a little bit more useful camera angle. So anyway, the first thing I do is I just clean it up the best I can. Um, and empty out all the, all the soap and yet rinse this whole area the whole container inside so it's um, you know as clean as one can get it <laughs> it makes it nicer to work with when I was trying to disassemble it and uh, the first part I take off is the top and there's a um, one screw there time out there because this this thing it, it comes off but it's it's not terribly easy so um yeah it's actually um using these notches so it didn't come off right away so I had to try and do it as best I could. So it actually makes a yeah it's it's you can't really press on that so it's a matter of trying to yeah. And um, the first thing I check is that um, is this chime, you know, the elastic holding the chime in. Is that still in place, or is there any, um, yeah, other parts that have come off? And you need to um, clean this hose out, or recommend that you try and check this hose or clean it out. So you need to take that out, so that actually just lifts up, and then you can actually take the end bit off. That's cleanable, and now it's free on the top end, and, and everything else looks perfectly okay there. So we'll need to do that. And then we go down to the bottom side. So anyway, let's have a look at the battery compartment. So I mean, I've taken the batteries out already, and um, here we suddenly see one of the key problems with these units is that. If you see they get horribly corroded and that can lead to um, intermittent contact problems with the batteries and, and if you, when it gets even more rusty then um, it puts oxidization onto the battery terminals and then they, yeah, then they don't contact and so after a while this is like, <laughs> it's actually even worse, it, 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 it just becomes an intermittent failure point, really totally. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually open this up now. It has four screws in each corner of the battery compartment. And that's you. That's we unscrew them, we can actually check the condition of the screws. And in some cases, the those these screws are not um, 
stainless steel so they can be very rusty so my decision is to keep them if they if you can still use the screwdriver with them when I try and keep them you can actually buy screws um, about that size so anyway now we came into the inside and now you have this electronics cord and the next thing is just to pull out these two connectors so you just do that you just drill out the cable like that and on the other side of course technically speaking if one's into electronics then one should never pull a cable out through the, using the cables but in this case it's a cheap device so it actually works very well to do that and here we can see the internal structure so you have the pump and then you have the motor that drives the pump so um, what well, one check we're gonna have to do is to um, clean out the um, actual pump and then as I said this pipe also so we take the rubber band off and then we're gonna unscrew those four screws you see it's a bit gunked up here in the entrance and then here you see even if how much water I've used to try to clean it out you see it's got some soap residue crap in there so um, you can just take the take the um, yeah, this plastic pit off the uh, off the pump and then we can uh, Whoa! You can actually take the whole pump apart, basically. Ah, oh, and then the pipe can come off also. That's what the pump looks like. This. And this is just a pump holder, and then that's the. So I'm going to take all these bits, and I'm going to just clean them and clean them in water. So that was extremely gunked up. So, um, but anyway, here's the order of the pump. So you have the bottom plastic bit here, and then the actual pump, and then you have one axle um, washer, and then the small axle washer, and then you actually have this this here okay. holder cap, and then you actually have the pulley. So we actually have to put this back together again. See it's grooved where the pipe goes, so I have to push it like that. And the cog wheel needs to go on. I must say this one was very, very gunked up. Now, when it's not gunked up anymore, you should be able to actually turn the axle with your hand, with your fingers, even without this pulley being on, and, and I couldn't even move it. So, so I actually had to use pliers. To, yeah, so I did a, a lot of cleaning with water just to get all the crap in it. And then we need to take the actual. To, oops, it's still crap in there also. Okay, that 
extra. So, and then you have the holes. Hole there. Side. Coming down. There. So I need to put the holes back. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Just to push it. And get the pump in without it flying all over the place. Okay. Alright, find the screws. Time one does this, then one still forgets what screws go where. the pump back in and see that that rotates and then we should um it's to be on there there's actually a very small o-ring that goes around there Classical, don't remember to put this on and then wonder why it doesn't work. So, that's back. So, now we've done that part. And then we go back to this side. And where did I put that? Slayed it. So I'll have to take a break and try and find what I did with that. So, found it, it was hidden under this. So, I'm going to put this back. Oh, it's just press fit, so it's no glue or anything. Just to make sure the kit. So, the whole ring back, because I think it was this one. No, oh, it's going to be a bit tricky. Ah, that's 
actually supposed to go in there. Uh, everything is in place, I think. And just slot the cap back on again. So, then actually, <laughs> that screw flew onto the floor. So I actually got to try and find that. Well, before I do that, then I'd just like to um, say one last detail of this package here. There's the um, infrared, it sends infrared from from there, it's an infrared LED. And then it sends it down to the receiver end. And um, you really have to look very carefully, is this, is this totally corroded? Like, is the wires disconnected? And um, sadly, that that is going to die. Um, and then when it dies, then we have to s swap out the um, the uh, infrared sensor. Oh, now I go look for the screw. So anyway, a little bit about the electronics. It's a kind of a nice little board, and it has the um, two connectors. And they're actually, if you look very carefully at the circuit board, then you see that they're the, they're actually marked what wires are for what, or what uh, contacts are for what. Now the only problem is that the large control chip there, it, it, all the markings have been removed, but all the other smaller chips one can actually diagnose. But I haven't I have not so far met a um, one of these units where I could diagnose that it's the actual elect electronics boards that's failed. So I don't know we. We um, take this out in the way I fix these. It has three screws. Oh, it's there. More light up. Very small screws. Yeah, it's in the corner. And they are a bit corroded. So, oh, and one can get this out. Now, the thing is that they, the circuit board continues onto the other side, so it gets onto the ends of the um, battery pack connection, so we need to get the board out for the way I fix it. And we're not going to use that. Usually this side here, it gets stuck, so I need to take some pliers. To so don't pull it with the circuit board, because the circuit board will probably break. So I'll use the pliers to ease it out. So anyway, in general, what does this do, this circuit board? Um, you can basically see we have on the top end, it has a chime. And then inside, in, in here, it has a LED light, just for a fact. And then it has a um, the motor, which uh, yeah, obviously controls the pump. And then it has um, an infrared uh, LED, and then an infrared receiving um, receiver LED here. So that's basically it. I mean, the, the, the functionality of this board is not that horrendously complicated. And then you have... Ah, you have two modes of operation. It's uh, it's um it can be like on or on with chime. So if you don't like the chime sound every time it pumps, then then you can just have it on and then it pumps on. Yep. So that's that. So um, and my objective is that we sh or is to replace this this unit here to get rid of it because it's got these corroded contacts and you can't get new ones and then the thing is that this is also so near to the to the ground so that you always get water ingress into this area so there's no real way to protect the battery cavity so what I developed um, I developed a new a new base for it 
use a standard battery pack. Actually, open it up so this is standard for battery battery pack. Um, very easily um, purchasable, and then it has also an on-off switch incorporated in the battery pack itself. And, um, and if we compare these two, then you see with the uh, the. I mean, I, I took away some. I mean, the, lots of the design features in the original design are just to save material, and so it's really irrelevant for three D printing because I mean, <laughs> if it's a one off deal, I don't care how much material is being used. And um, so, anyway, I, de I designed this one so the the board will sit here, and then it has a cavity here for the um, battery pack. So this is um, th the three D printing support material. So I'll remove it. So if anybody's interested in wanting this specific model, the design for it, then just leave a comment in the, in the comments or a request in the comments, and I'll um, I'll create a link or a location where you can get this uh, STL file or or the free CAD design files, depending on. Uh, you know. But as I said, this is this is this is not very complicated design. This type, ah, as I said, you c you could make something equivalent. Uh, but anyway, let's um. Get the circuit board prepared for this installation. So for that, we need to actually get rid of these these contacts. Oh, I actually forgot the one should. Have, yeah, I, I usually test this um, if it's going to actually work first. So um, let's. Um, that so then I have to I'm just going to solder the contacts onto the circuit board here So, now we've got it temporarily connected. Take this one. a basic function I mean you can hear the you can hear the pump running you can see it running um, yeah the chime function I don't really care about um, so basically the, yeah there really isn't that much more functionality you need to work than other than 
other than that. So, so I would say that this circuit board is usable. So now, now I can actually go and um, take those contacts away. So we can actually use it. Because otherwise, I mean, I would have taken the contacts away, put these wires on and then found out that the board wasn't working. So it's actually good to test the board. As I said, I haven't met a board. I haven't seen a board yet that's um, like bust. See, that's quite badly corroded. Next one. So. And usually, I just suck away. back of this board is that it's the, they put uh, well actually for good or bad they've actually protected the circuit board quite well so it's got an extra layer of um, plastic coating on and it actually smells very bad so make sure you have good ventilation so I, I would think that it would be yeah not that fun to try and like remove that chip stick like really bad and anyway, we know we have a working board at least. So the next step is to okay. Do it. Ah, this is a routine thing. So I'm going to do this offline. I'm just going to remove all this um, support material from and get this prepared. So anyway, I removed the support material. So now we have the cavity, and then the battery just slots in there. So it's kind of a loose fit. It will be a little bit tighter fit once it's in place. And the idea is to make the, like if, if any water gets in here and it corrodes and stuff, then it's just to replace this. Very easy. So anyway, um, the card is going to sit on the top. In my design, I need to actually cut those pins down. So uh, let's get that fixed. So. 
so. So, now. Jammed by the wires. So now it's in place. Now we need to trim the wires a bit. Yeah, these wire trimmers, um, I was a bit skeptical about how they would work at first, but, um, but I must say they've actually been very good. the wires the wrong thing. Uh, ah, it doesn't matter. It's just a switch. But ah, that's, that's annoying. Okay, fix offline. That was a bit ridiculous, it took forever. That's because you know you're trying to stress when you're doing filming and stuff. Oh, well, there. But now they're now they're in place. So they just um, come out and then flop to the side. Okay. 
solder it up. There we go. I need to screw the board down. And I did make one. Yeah. A little bit of a design fault of this third screw that won't it's the the hole I have in the design is in a little bit of the wrong place. But I don't think that it matters. It will stay in place with two screws. I actually think three screws is a bit overkill. Test if it works. Check that the wires don't get in the way of the motor. And my design isn't super perfect, so there's a, like one millimeter error in the design of this support. <laughs> that makes, but it actually seemed to go in relatively easy. But sometimes it can be a bit of a struggle because I know I, I, I when I did the design that I, I wasn't able to get the the um, the actual holes into the exactly the right position. Yeah. And then of course I shouldn't have put the power supply in because I need to put the screws in. Oh, feel me. Because the screws go through through the bottom. And this is a bit of a tricky operation. Slipping off. 
should have put some tape on. The whole temper. Ah, that means. Anyway, I need to. It's got through holes through here, so you can actually screw the screws. But what you need to do is you need to. You need to use these pliers and then you need to slot the screws in so that they go into the base. So it's a bit of a combination of wrestling with this and then trying to you know, do several things at the same time. So I think I'll do that off camera because it is, it is just fiddling. Ah, one small detail. So I made this area flat. So I actually have to take away this trim. In, in my design, then you have to take, cut away this trim. Otherwise it actually doesn't seat properly. So I just take away this trim that has no function anymore. Oh, now it'll actually sit better. Okay, I got it in. I, it's sometimes very tricky, but when you get the holes in right in place, then it clicks down. Okay. Now, what we have to do is we have to take the battery pack out carefully. Now, the tricky part is to. So, I'm going to do offline because it just takes time. You take the screwdriver like that, uh, pliers like this, put the screw on the end like that, and then you need to slide the screw into the correct hole.
Photoshop it a bit because in the 3D printing it leaves an edge. Haha, <laughs> got it in. So that's one screw. So basically we don't need the tape bits anymore. <laughs> so then I'll do the same same procedure and get the um, other three screws in place. So that's all the four bottom screws in. A little bit of struggle as it usually is when you're trying to balance a screw on a on the suppliers. Let's see if this still works. And so we put it on and then yep. sounds good. So the next test will be to um give it to my wife and then she will fill it with soap and see if it actually because she's the one who selects the soaps <laughs> and then see that it if it pumps but usually I once I get you've gone through those procedures and I put one of these together then um, I have not seen one that hasn't um, hasn't um, worked so I can say I can say we just call it a day on this one so I hope this will help you also save some of your soap dispensers um yeah i hope you found this uh, informative um please consider subscribing um if you thought the video was good then hit the like button uh, merch is available or if you'd just like to buy me a cup of coffee the links are in the comments and um all the uh, contributions will go to developing the channel and um I'll see you in the next one. So, a little bit of a bonus entry. Um, they also have this variant where the motor and the pumps be moved to the top and the electronics stays at the bottom. And oddly enough, this is actually a one that where there's n no corrosion problem here in the battery pack. But um, if I put it into chime mode, as you see, it chimes which means that the, it's activated but the pump doesn't run so it's not even it's not even trying even if i take the back, the belt off it's not even trying to um, turn the motor and the sad thing is i haven't found out how to get this thing apart so i can pull the motor even, and the cables go to the motor from the side there so i'm just going to give it a try and see if i can um, disconnect this Oh, that was quite easy. So you pull the cogs out and then you have the screw. So let's um, investigate what we can find. Because I really would like to have a look at the motor. Oh, okay. Now you get the whole... Oh, that's convenient. Look at that. You get the whole very rusty screws port out, which is the sucking mechanism. And a very long... Oh, is it a bottom pump with a long rod, a long axle? Oh, that's just awful. <laughs> you can see that. Oh, the pump doesn't really feel that good, and then it's all rusty. So they went from one to oh, I, I think, yeah. Why did they use screws that can rust? It's so just so stupid. Like a good design ruined by cheap manufacturing. Oh, uh, anyway, so let's have a look and see what we can see. Uh, that's the motor lead combination. So it's got that li the light for the. You know. I wouldn't be too surprised if this wasn't getting somehow. Oh, that's just awful. Look at that. Oh. Uh, that is all corroded. So it's got soap probably coming up into the... And what does that? So looks like a bit of plastic. So I think there's been liquid ingress into that cavity. And I think that it's...
might have ruined more. Contact seems to be okay. to say what you can see that there's been a bit of liquid ingress into the actual motor. And then there's a piece of plastic in there also. Look at that. Just in the cabin. For some odd reason. So that's the water come from above then. But it's it's been sitting in a puddle of liquid, presumably water. And it might of course corroded the brushes and everything in there. Mm. What I could do is to try and measure the voltage. Maybe a little tiny bit. Yeah, I can actually feel it. The motor is trying to turn. But it's probably the brushes inside are just so corroded. I don't know if I can even get that to work. Or it's not getting enough voltage. These are really good the clips. So you can just connect it in and see how much voltage it's trying to give the motor. And it really doesn't matter which is plus. What's minus? It'll just show a negative voltage if um, That's very inconclusive. I don't think it's making very good contact. But let's assume that that side is making good contact on that way, but this is so corroded. It could be that this is just bullshit. One volt? No, that's millivolts. No, the motor is really not getting any meaningful voltage. It's really just moving very slightly. Or the motor's short circuit. So that could be that it's just feeding and it's, it's getting... Could it be that the capacitor diode no, resistor diode combination is screwing it. Well, since we're in experimenting mode, I'll just we make the circuit simpler. Goodbye. So now we don't have a diode. Oh. 
I'm guessing that the internal, you know, the stuff inside the motors, this crap, got all rusted. clean. <laughs> That's all wet. Oh, I don't know. No, it's still there. You can see the brakes. So basically because it was wet or oily or something, but some uh, presumably soapy it's probably been short circuiting that um, the stator. There's no wires or anything being corroded. No, there's no blackening, otherwise the magnets are okay. No contacts. Are they just being worn to. Oh, those are so ganked up! There's like residue here on the saw everywhere. Darn. Ah, how to get that cleaned up? Wash it under some water. Not this part. This plastic part with. It. Contact. And now this diode is so rusty. I mean the lead is so <laughs> it's, just, it's so rusty. Uh, I can't put that back in again. Those those are nearly rusted through. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave this. I'm going to condemn this diode. The lead is dead. Or we don't use it, so take that away. Make it a bit simple. No, I think I need to try and put that under a bit of water and see if I can get it cleaned up. Well, there's no luck cleaning it, and um, the voltage level over the motor, I mean, it tries to move a little bit, but it's nearly nothing, and the internal impedance is like 2 ohms or something, so that's would indicate a short circuit in the motor or the actual control mechanism is, is bust. See there's no no power in it. So I'm going to disconnect the feed cable and see if it if I get a voltage over the motor then. The cables are nicely marked, it says plus 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 on, on the cable. can give them a little bit of credit for that, even if they don't tell you what their main control chip is. Yep, 
4.7 volts. So I think that when it's trying to add on to us, then yeah, 4.4. So I mean, the the control circuit seems to be okay. So it's the motor that's um, corroded and dead. So I have to try and find a replacement motor. Or this is so changed out the motor and um, it still doesn't run and the voltage still stays very low so that would be indicated of the control electronics not working as it should so I have to open up the bottom and see what it looks like. Oh, quite a different circuit board. They've gone to one only using one connector in this, well not that it really matters but they haven't marked any of the, uh, any of the pins what they're for. So anyway, my interpretation is that something. Oh, I don't think it's the main chip. It could be the diode or something that's gone wrong on this board. So that's why the motor doesn't turn. So anyway, one of my diagnoses is that this gets um, plus 4.8 volts in either terminal. So that means that to activate the motor, one of the terminals needs to be grounded and. Um, to get the motor to turn. So I activated it several times and I measured. So it's basically it's it's that pin there and then this trace. And, uh, and both of them stay at 4.8 volts so there's, there's no bearing. So I could assume that possibly this controller chip doesn't um, sync enough because it got short circuited. So that means that it was trying to sync the full capacity of the battery if it was with the motor. When it was embedded in water, it was sort of short circuited, so it probably burnt out the driver pipe. But otherwise, the logic seems to be working in this trip, uh, chip, but the um, driver um, part seems to be coupled. Um, think there's other options really without having yeah building a circuit diagram or something. It is possible that one of these are transistors and then they uh, amplify the signal. But they're kind of connected to other traces. So I could actually just have a look and see if maybe one of these is involved in the process, but I, I don't think so. I think I, we have to condemn this um, electronics board as dead, so this this one can't be re recuperated. And the motor's also gone, so it's coupled. It's two. Actually, I'm going to test this. I, I, I'm, I wouldn't be too surprised, but I think this will probably, um, will probably still work. Anyway, that was just to see that there's another variant of this. I just had to try it, as you see. So, it actually is nothing. I was successfully able to re restore, restore the boulder, not that it's any good.